I'd like to elaborate on how we're planning to leverage hydrogen on that carbon uh, journey. Gil shared why we see so much promise in hydrogen, why it's increasingly clear that hydrogen is going to form a key part of Europe's energy strategy and why there's a growing appetite to accelerate. To help speed up expansion of hydrogen technology, we're pursuing a strategy that extends far beyond passenger cars. And it's based around three pillars, light vehicles, business to business or B2B, and the creation of new ecosystems. Regarding light vehicles, our Mirai fuel cell sedan is now in its second generation, and there are a growing number of localized fleet applications where Mirai is being used to great zero emissions effect. For example, Paris has the world's largest fleet of zero emission hydrogen powered taxis with over 600 Mirais. Similar initiatives can also be found in Copenhagen, in Berlin, and in Hamburg. And we're now also exploring expansion of hydrogen technology to other passenger vehicles where fuel cell can deliver a competitive advantage. At the end of this week, we will announce the prototype development of a fuel cell Hilux in conjunction with four UK engineering partners and supported by the UK government. Development is progressing well and we're moving ahead with preparing small-scale production at our plant in Berniston. The second pillar is heavier duty B2B applications where Gil has already highlighted the significant benefits. We have many projects underway, particularly in the truck, bus, rail and maritime sectors, as well as stationary power generators. Our automotive partnerships include developing a fuel cell city bus with Salvador Caetano and the supply of our second generation fuel cell stack to Daimler for their Mercedes-Benz Equitaro bus. Turning to the maritime sector, we also recently worked with Energy Observer Development, or EODEV, to successfully integrate our fuel cell technology into the Energy Observer boat, ahead of its emission-free crossings of the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. We also partnered with EODEV to create hydrogen power generators, an example of which was recently used to light up the Eiffel Tower in Paris. The third pillar of our hydrogen strategy is to create new ecosystems. This means teaming up with like-minded partners to establish sustainable hydrogen partnerships and solutions. One good example is in Germany, where we're working with the green hydrogen provider, GP Joule, and our bus partner, Salvador Caetano, to expand supply and infrastructure. It's a model that we'd like to repeat elsewhere, with two clear objectives in mind. Firstly, accelerating the distribution of preferably green hydrogen, together with the required infrastructure. And secondly, enabling the development of mobility-related applications with each stakeholder. By working with partners to create this interdependency, we can develop a stronger business model and support communities that want to further expand into fully-fledged hydrogen corridors. Our hydrogen ambition is clearly resonating with an increasingly wide group of customers, and our fuel cell business unit is inundated with requests for collaboration. So to meet this increased demand, we're already assembling our second generation fuel cell modules here in Brussels. And we plan to expand production to one of our European manufacturing plants as the demand increases. This is why hydrogen leadership is a key pillar of our going beyond roadmap and 
our strategy to achieve carbon neutrality by 2040. Now, I can't close the hydrogen topic without mentioning the other opportunity that we're exploring. I'm talking, of course, about hydrogen combustion. I'm sure that those of you who joined us at our last Kenshiki Forum remember the hydrogen GR Yaris. For certain, you recall the noise and the excitement, almost like we discovered the Holy Grail, keeping everything we love about driving today, but delivering it in a zero emission world of tomorrow. Since then, our engineering teams have been working hard to further develop the technology and have been testing at a number of endurance races. Here in Belgium, I joined Akio Toyota at the WRC Ypres Rally a couple of months ago, where he personally drove the Hydrogen GR Yaris along the rally route during the weekend. Let's hear what he had. <laughs> The hydrogen is uh, one of the uh, solutions of carbon neutrality. Uh, I know the carbon neutrality is one of the solutions is BEV. However, we have many other solutions. This is CO2 zero or vehicles and uh, uh, fun to drive and also sounds like the engines. I think the smile on his face tells you all you need to know about how the car performs and importantly, how it sounds. The progress in hydrogen combustion technology development has been rapid over this last year. For instance, during this season's highly demanding endurance races in Japan, we were able to increase engine power by 24% and improve torque by 33%. And we were able to significantly reduce the refueling time from four minutes 40 seconds, all the way to 1 minute 30 seconds. We're now at the point where we're transferring our learnings from motorsport into a prototype road car for everyday use. By combining fuel cell packaging technology from Mirai and state-of-the-art high-pressure direct injection combustion technology from our Gazoo Racing Activity, we have created a hydrogen combustion version of the Corolla Cross. It can accommodate five passengers. And because the hydrogen tanks are installed under the floor, it can accommodate their luggage too. We're probably about 40% along the path to commercialization. And I don't know if we'll reach all the way to 100%, but clearly it's too early to stop trying. And definitely there's a big opportunity in motorsports. If we do get there, then like the Corolla Cross, maybe there's also a hydrogen combustion solution that can contribute to meeting the future ZEV mandates. <laughs>